Drink your little oh, I didn't realize this sand was, uh, drink. I thought this was a mixed berry soda. It's it is not. <laughs> no, you've gone. And you've fell, uh, fallen fall into fall the deep on. end. It's gluten free though. What a classic move. Um, that sounds like a mom move. You know, like a soccer mom move. <laughs> I just thought I was going for the orange juice. I thought it was. I just guess I'd love to drink this whole bottle of wine now. Oh, it's a mimosa. <laughs> I'm feeling really fun at two in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> what game are we doing first? Is that it? Is that how we're bringing it in? <laughs> Video games. No. Oh. It's not why I'm here. I'm here for the only important mediums, which are books, um, theater, uh, ballet, which I suppose in a sense is a subset of theater, and... Um, <laughs> anime. The Matt's going to say anime. The Crufts Dog Show. <laughs> Those are the four things that I'm here for. Are we supposed to guess your game based games, on this? Because you... it doesn't sound like a game I know. No, I'm just saying <laughs> that I, I don't respect video games. Those are the oh, only okay. forms of media that I do. I actually, I think that are important. <laughs> video games aren't art. The only things that are art are dogs performing tricks for people's enjoyment. I, I agree. Speaking of dogs. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I cannot believe you just did this to us. Mm. <laughs> Pull it up, Astrid. So we finally justified the purpose of me being here on staff for <laughs> Glasshouse Games because I once had a video go semi-viral. Some people still reference it of me <laughs> standing in front of Tower Bridge and saying uh, some words about Watch Dogs Legion. Play the clip. Uh, we could we could actually. I'll, I will give Glasshouse Games limited permission to uh, use my likeness in that sense. Landon, the medium apple, Satan's arsehole. Used to be the greatest city in the world. But now there's too many fucking computers, isn't there? It's not very good, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Stop thinking it's funny. Yeah. It's, um... So, a lot of... The reason I think that we haven't covered this before is that um, two really seminal bits of writing about this game have already come out from uh, Austin Walker and Jackson Tyler um, for different um, outlets. And it's really... I, I hate it when the first bit of writing about the game just like completely encapsulates the entirety of the mood and like um, means that the conversation about it uh, completely stops because it's just so talented a writer has described the faults and uh, upsides of it that there might as well not even be anybody talking about it. And yet somehow I've had to try and find something else that I can say about this. <laughs> All right, so next game we're yeah, doing. Yeah, we'll do, uh, um, so... Watch Dogs Legion, mate. It's um, London, isn't it? It's bloody London. <laughs> um, that's pretty interesting. I quite like that. I do just potter around in some of the more occupied places, and I just I like being there. I like turning a corner and then recognizing, like, oh, that's uh, you know where I had a sandwich and a cry. Um, <laughs> but um, when you go to places like where we're in, they've condensed it so much that it's unrecognizable. Um, it's like somewhere like uh, Old Street Roundabout um, and the places that are around that look so unrecognizable from it that it's almost as if you feel like you should be in a different place because of how accurately they've represented some other parts. Mm. Um, it really stands out. Um, but the thing that I really want to talk about is how um, the game is all about trying to do some revolution against uh, a PMC that has taken over London. And it's just kind of quaint, like the way that uh, it decides to get people together with all a bunch of special skills to, um, you know, if, as long as we're all in this together, we can, we can <laughs> fix it. Um, but it doesn't really... At a time of pretty heavy societal upheaval, um, we're now not really very capable of doing this. Mm. And this is presenting a world in which, like, oh, if only we just made the decision to all uh, Work go, together. go out and do murders <laughs> <laughs> in the best possible way. It's, um, yeah, it's not very good. And also, um, I was thinking about this in relation to ba basically everything that I've watched this year, and I don't know whether you feel the same, that like, almost as a consequence of a world that is ravaged by pandemic, um, everything that happens is sort of quaint, like a, a bad um, world like this where no one can, um, well, sorry, where um, people need to band together and like work together to try and uh, topple a, a 
terrible thing happening. Like now, I can't even meet with anybody in public that mm. I don't know already. Like that's so. This is almost more optimistic. Oh, that's exactly the word. Thank you. Yeah, this is op- more optimistic about the, the possibilities than the actual world that we live in. So the the pitch for Watch Dogs as a series is that you have access to a bunch of technology that will make it easier for you to do spying stuff. Um, and the specific niche of this one is that you can be any character. Mm. Um, and there are missions where you can't access them unless you're playing as somebody specifically, like uh, playing as a, a guard for the PMC. Um, but every mission that you then duck into is practically as solvable with those unique characters as they are with any of the ones that you've been playing as previously like it says um you know you need to have this phone and do some hacking but whenever i just go into a level the the real thing that i do hacking with is a gun like that it doesn't make it any easier any other time the game i've never played any of the watchdog games but it just from this trailer it looks a lot more violent than i actually thought yeah. it these games were i thought it was all like sort of hacky 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 but yeah there was like c- the construction worker was using a nail gun it's <laughs> very true like s- staple their brain in i remember when the trailer for the first one um dropped on an e3 um where for the entirety of it there was no violence really at all mm-hmm. for about 80 percent of the running time and i remember everybody watching that and thinking uh oh this seems pretty cool it seems like a very big triple a developed game that doesn't seem to be going the route of most of them and your lad just pulls out a gun at one point you're like oh cool i don't actually have to really pay attention to this <laughs> like this isn't going to be very very revolutionary in the way that it would like you to believe it is um I fucking hate it <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know. I've just seen people really, like, uncritically enjoying and, like, not enjoying. I don't want to say that. It sounds really mean. But, like, just enjoying this game because it's like, oh, London, fun. I guess because I am a through and through Londoner, that's not even much of an appeal to me. Like, I can go out there. I, I, can, I can go and see it. I got free travel, man. I can travel around. Um, yeah, I just, and especially with, like, Ubisoft po- Ubisoft's politics on top of that, I just, I'm not compelled to try out this game at all while. It's something that uh, Jackson talks about in their um, article about this, about how like a lot of the protests that are in this game are people with banners that say like, uh, "Oh, we don't like this PMC, but we can't wait until you bring back the uh, the Metropolitan Police." Yeah. It's like, who who yeah. would that? Who, what person that would go to protest would go like, <laughs> "No, we don't like these cops, but we do like these cops." It is like the most centrist possible interpretation yeah. of a revolution, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. yeah, I think that's totally fair. Shall I? Uh tell you a little mm. bit about a, a color revolution as it were <laughs> i'm not i'm not shoehorning this in. yeah all right do it color me I'm, intrigued I'm not, i don't oh. think it's it have you guys heard of a, a game shoehorn. called de blob i'm I sure have. some of you yeah. have no. um i am playing by thq nordic i am i am playing the i'm sure they have the rights now or something uh i am playing the uh, Switch versions, as always. Um, I heard about these games back in the day, and I never jumped on them because I kind of just skipped multiple generations. But I will tell you one thing. These are amazing, f- amazingly fun broken games, that's what I'll say. They, it it kind of feels like a tech demo. Uh, you're playing this little blob creature in this kind of like cartoon world where all the color has been removed and uh, you are trying to bring back, they actually use the, they actually, it isn't a stretch because in the story they use the aesthetics of revolution as well. Like the whole point is you are trying to upend the fascist, like colorless society by bringing back color to the world. Um, but yeah, so the whole idea is you go around the city, you're this blob, you have different paint colors you can get and you're trying to paint everything you can see, but there's little challenges in between. Um, and every and the music is a big part of this. So like we talked about, uh, was it Ape Out? Uh, what was that game? Why am I blanking? Is that the name of the game? Something like that, right? Ape Out is a game. Ape, about Ape Out the, is a game. The escaping okay. Gorilla. <laughs> I'm thinking Ape Escape. Um, <laughs> so Despite everything that people say, <laughs> Ape Out definitely video yes. game. Yes. So the music, right? So the music in uh, De Blob is all these little like granular elements of like different styles of music. So like funk and jazz and hip hop and stuff. Mm. And the more you color, the more complex the music gets and the different colors interact with each other. So the funny thing is this game, I don't know if, you know, it's kind of a great um, 
meditation like paradox thing for someone like me to play because it's hard to play as a completionist because it doesn't like it does apparently it doesn't want you to complete everything like it has goals and stuff but if you exit and come back into a level it doesn't track them very well it's very hard to tell like what you have what you've done and what you haven't done uh you have to like start everything over from the beginning so it's not cumulative so you really just have to be okay with whatever experience you have and that experience is just like it's just kind of like childlike it's kind of you know it's a, it's a bit janky but it's very fun to just walk around the level and just you're just kind of listening to this weird symphony that you've created and it kind of you know it gets increasingly harder there's challenges and stuff i don't know if you can see in the video like the height like the higher you go sometimes there's like ships like airships in the sky you can get um yeah there's all kinds of weird little things about this game but i am it has a very very hardcore cult fan base and they are convinced it's like the best thing since sliced bread uh, i'm convinced that it's it's bread it is it is sliced bread i don't know if it's the best <laughs> thing since sliced bread but it, it is a form of bread is the blob a better revolution simulator than Watch Dogs legion i 100 percent partially because from what, I'm, <laughs> from what i'm hearing about Watch Dogs legion the kind of you actually like succeed and you're having fun succeeding uh, and it makes sense mm. it's plausible in the world that they have developed that it's almost like the giver if you've ever read that i had to read that as a kid where you're you're bringing back people's perception of the world but it's fun and joyous and it's like celebratory plus you are a cute blob so it's really, <laughs> it's really interesting that it's um like music returning as you're uh, coloring in the world because it, yeah. it almost echoes the conversations that we've been having about uh digital rights for musicians and uh, not being able to play any stuff oh, due to yeah. DMCA. <laughs> so I can imagine that De Blob is just a uh, far-flung future that we currently live in where, you know, music has been taken away, <laughs> can't play anything, mm. decalcify your pineal gland, open your third <laughs> eye. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the sequel, people seem hey, which to really was... like the sequel as well. I haven't played that yet. I'm just... I'm struggling with the th the fact that I can't do the completionist thing properly, but I am trying to get through the the first one. Speaking of mediocre games, <laughs> <laughs> third time's a charm there. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, this is the first time. Bring up Vol, bring up Valhalla, bring it up. I I think that I might be playing the same game that you're playing, Matt, mm. but like a thousand years, twelve hundred years difference in that it's a game that's kind of find to just turn off your brain to if that's all you care about and like wander around a kind of interesting uh or different environment but also somewhat familiar like sort of a retelling of a, of an area that or thing that you're familiar with uh but everything around it everything around that if you pay any amount of attention to completely drags drags the entire experience down I I think I've had like 20 hours in this game and I don't I mean I don't want to put any more in because of how much has just been how much I let myself not just do nothing <laughs> you know not just wander around and turn my brain off which is all all you want to do there's this game is like 80 hours long so there's a lot to do it's just that I don't think that any of it's interesting and <laughs> like so playing the game feels fine but the crux of my issue, I think, with um, with Assassin's Creed is that it mixes that fine gameplay, which is, I mean, at, you know, at best banal, I guess, with just best banal. <laughs> <laughs> it's Yikes. sorry, I'll say it's Oof. serviceable. Got it's, Alex P. Serviceable, workmanlike, serviceable <laughs> gameplay. It's serviceable fun, right? Like, if that's all you, if that's all you care about, but it mixes it with like probably the worst story in video game history <laughs> whoa uh if you all have ever heard of assassin's creed you might be familiar with the animus <laughs> which is just the stupidest sci-fi fanfic <laughs> that so has much. ever has ever uh gotten a triple a budget at least um and i know there's been a lot of people who have told me while i was playing this before i played it that oh i heard or oh they really toned down the animus stuff in this game if that's the case, I can't imagine how chock full <laughs> the last two games have been because I, it happens. Well, it it feels like it's happening all the time. I think because I'm like almost allergic to it in how bad it like translates into how how immersed you might be getting into the story 
uh, if the story was like worth telling to begin with. But it interrupts that with just this really stupid modern like kind of tie in yeah. with it's just sci fi nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they even bring in which I don't remember from the first few Assassin's Creed, like there's animus puzzles within, you know, the historical gameplay that you're that you're trying to play. And it's just so exactly. jarring. And I don't mm. understand why I'm doing it. I don't understand why I get teleported out for 20 minutes to like look at fucking, I don't know, fake computer consoles. I'm suddenly not <laughs> surprised that absolutely none of this is featured in any of the marketing for the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what uh, are the what are the innovations for gameplay wise? Like, because I know every Assassin's Creed tries to add like at least some, even if it's like a fake thing that oh you can do this now. I mean, I guess maybe the long ships, but there's better boats in Black Flag. Black Flag, yeah. Um, and also the long ships only they don't f- at least they feature in pretty heavily in the first uh, like quarter of the game, I guess, uh, which is really just the intro. And then you don't really use them much aside from fast traveling because you're just on rivers and stuff once you get to um, England. Uh, But you're still like you're still climbing peaks to synchronize your map or whatever. You're still like um, going on. I mean, I guess there's raids raids, which also are really that was maybe the first time that I felt like a. I'm gonna say revulsion. Whoa! I'm gonna say These revulsion. Are uh, some harsh a video game words. made you feel something, so oh, it oh, sounds oh. like it's pretty good. No, <laughs> actually, on our um, on our Crusader Kings three reflections uh, video, I think it was the Geek of the North pointed out how much this game doesn't want uh, to like to face what the Vikings were in a yeah. way. Uh, they want to paint this game wants to make the player feel like a hero. And it's obviously, if you're putting that in the context of history, it's really difficult to make the Vikings actually, you know, the good <laughs> yeah. guys. Um, and it's the it's the difference in that, um, like that the character they never actually your character never comes to terms or has any reflection whatsoever on the raids and pillaging that they go on. <laughs> and the game even goes to the extent of it makes you fail missions if you are if you kill anybody who's unarmed. Like you're on a mission to raid and pillage a monastery or a village, <laughs> and if you if you kill anything that isn't armed, the monks of which you're like <laughs> fucking destroy, burning down their uh, their monastery, you fail the mission. But it's yeah. okay because you can play as a woman. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Although I I think they they have tried to skirt around this right, like by making it more deliberate that you're playing a video game when you're playing the video game. So I did look up the story beats for later and spoilers for assassin's creed valhalla anybody but it's all a simulation (laughs) like valhalla they find you find a like sort of i don't know in some you find a like an ancient computer system uh that (laughs) proves that the afterlife is a simulation and you upload your brain into the matrix to go to valhalla The tonal whiplash from that. Yeah. Like, what is going yeah. on? It's what? all actually Timmy's third birthday party, and everyone had these are all paid <laughs> actors that are part of a simulation yeah. to make him happy. And now, time for something completely different <laughs> a good video game. Okay. Manifold Garden. Manifold Garden. What is this? Anybody familiar with this? I uh, don't know. Um, Ooh. It's very weird. Um, I like, it. I, like if I'm going to be completely like <laughs> reductive about it, it's, it's like if someone took like an M. C. Escher. Um, mm. I, I thought you were going to say it's a very Alex Pepper. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it's that, but yeah, it's, it's if someone took an M. C. Escher painting or, yeah, and then drawing, yeah. made a puzzle game out mm. of that yeah. drawing, whatever, <laughs> and then tried to <laughs> look like a fucking hard history major, yeah. <laughs> and then tried to make a puzzle game out of that. That's that's exactly what it is. Like no, there is really no cool. um. Yeah, there's no real end state. There are just a bunch of puzzles mm. that you can just keep sort of falling off the edge of, of like any side of the building and just keep going and going and going and going. You don't return, right? You just like no, you no. continuously kind of you, progress. Yeah, right? literally. Um, and yeah, I, I thought that was like quite fun, even though I am like 
notoriously terrible at puzzles i think if i sort of got stuck on something i'd just sort of jump off the edge which aggravated my motion sickness really badly (laughs) um and then you know just kind of try and tackle something else um but it looks really cool the art style is fantastic and like you know the word immersive gets used and thrown around in so many weird ways but in the truest form of that word i think going back to its roots it it is very that um this would look really cool in vr i bet oh my god the motion sickness i guess when you're falling yeah Yeah. that would be for that what is so what <laughs> kind of puzzles oh what kind of puzzles are we talking about are they all kind of like visual are they like witness the witness style or are they are they just abstract is it like shapes and stuff um you can sort of see this is like the puzzle at the very beginning like they make you do one to kind of get out of like the main room so Whoa. you've got like these different color yeah exactly right so I guess I guess they are pretty abstract um and then it's like right okay you've got this color and it needs to align with these different line um with these different cubes and you need to go and find them but like not using common sense like i the pro- the reason why i'm not good at puzzles is because i overthink everything but if mm. i let my brain like stop thinking for a second then i'm just like i'm just gonna explore this yeah. in, in the truest sense of exploration that usually is the key to figuring out almost the puzzle. like the abstraction of the puzzle just helps you your like reptile brain just work it out without having to think about 1, it. One thousand percent. That's yeah. amazing. This this um, looks like if Portal yeah, was on DMT to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even like the little companion QB type yeah. things, yeah. Kinda, it works. I've I'm, seen a few people talking about this game actually. I was gonna say I'm yeah. surprised that like none of you lot like. Is this this year or last year? Last year. Mm. Um, huh. Yeah, it was on one of my list for the mobile game of the year. This oh, is on it's, mobile. It's on mobile. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. Okay. I. Definitely. How you can? How do you? Can. But I saw at the beginning it was like was the controls, or is it just also on? It's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How do the motion, or sorry, the touch controls? Do they work? I right? think they're pretty. Like it's not. It's it not doesn't feel Twitch jarring. Shooter, so. No, 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 not at <laughs> and, all. And is so this thing where you where you run up against the wall? Does it automatically shift perspectives, or do you have to press something? Usually, you have to press something with, especially with the puzzles at the beginning. So this, like I'm saying, is like the first big puzzle yeah, you encounter um yeah <laughs> you, like when you approach it it like does something else according mm-hmm. to yeah. what you need to be able to leave the room um what did you mean by you were surprised none of us slotted <laughs> like this game? because we're all it's pretentious a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're all pretentious <laughs> wankers that, so. like i am i am a self proclaimed i'm playing valhalla <laughs> um yeah but that, that's the really weird thing today i am the triple a baby i am the console scrub here and like you lots were just like oh, i'm playing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> you know um, it does remind me of another game that i have played um called naissance which has a similar sort of like these sort of infinitely large really like almost existential like structures that just go on forever and ever mm. and if this is portal on dmt then i think naissance is probably portal on mushrooms uh, because it's a lot darker uh, and spookier um but this looks really cool i'm gonna have to check this out i defo yeah i think shay is tom haverford on parks and rec right now getting getting wooed by the abstract painting <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't think it, <laughs> but she looks at it and she's like, "This is making me feel things. What is going on right now?" <laughs> is this what all art is? Yeah. No, this is really cool. I, I'm probably gonna check this out actually.